And welcome back. Uh, another week, another solo in the bag. Uh, this time with one of, if not the most famous uh, guitar solo on this entire list. That was Mark Knopfler and Dire Straits with Sultans of Swing coming in at a very deserving number 22 on Guitar World Magazine's Top 100 Solos of All Time. Everyone knows this solo. Uh, my mother knows this solo. My, uh, my wife knows this solo. Heck, my two teenage daughters probably know this solo. My uh, 71, 72-year-old mother actually uh, asked me the other day if I'd posted any new videos to my channel uh, in the last week or two, and uh, I said, yeah, I just posted a new one a couple of days ago, a Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine. And she said, oh dear, I don't think I know that one. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, and then she asked, you know, do you have anything coming up? What are you doing next? And uh, I said, oh, I'm actually doing Sultans of Swing by uh, Dire Straits. And uh, she said, ooh, I like that one. And, uh, and my wife as well, who, she, uh, who really couldn't give a shit about any of my guitar business, uh, actually quite enjoyed listening to me uh, practice this one over the past week. And uh, anyway, big solo, uh, big famous solo or pair of solos to be more precise. Uh, something I've wanted to learn since I was a kid, uh, but never really sat down and put the time in to get it done until this week. Uh, really interesting guitar playing this one. I was uh, I was 14 in 1978 when Sultans of Swing came out and I loved it then and I still do 41 years later. Uh, such a classic and timeless tune. It comes on the radio, you just got to turn it up. It just uh, doesn't seem to age, you know, it doesn't sound dated. Uh, this song could be released tomorrow and still sound like something fresh and new. Uh, just a, a quick word about the song itself and Mark Knopfler. Uh, before we dig into the solo and my travails with it. Uh, I pulled this from a, a 2013 article from American Songwriter Magazine uh, by Rick Moore, and uh, he sums up uh, Sultans of Swing pretty well. This is what he said. He said, with Sultans of Swing, a breath of fresh air was exhaled into the airwaves in the late 70s. Uh, sure, Donald Fagan of Steely Dan and Tom Waits were writing great lyrics, 
about characters that you'd love to meet. And Jeff Beck and Eddie Van Halen were amazing guitar players. But uh, Mark Knopfler, he could do both things as well or better than almost anybody out there in his own way. And didn't seem to have any obvious rock influences unless you try to include Bob Dylan. Uh, like his contemporary and future duet partner Sting, Mark Knopfler's ideas were intellectually and musically stimulating, but were also accessible to the average listener. It was almost like jazz for the layman. Sultans of Swing was a, a lesson in prosody. There's a word for you, prosody. Uh, and and uh, tasty guitar playing that has seldom been equaled since. Uh, he goes on to say, if you aren't familiar with Sultans of Swing or haven't listened to it in a while, uh, you should definitely check it out. And prosody, by the way, means kind of singing along uh, syllable by syllable with what you're playing on, on your instrument. Uh, well put. Uh, an excellent analysis of Mark Knopfler and Sultans of Swing by, uh, by Rick Moore of American Songwriter Magazine. Uh, when he stated that it was a blast of fresh air at the time, he couldn't be more correct. Uh, the charts at the time were uh, pretty much dominated by sappy pop and a lot of disco and a lot of the Bee Gees, while the alternative scene, especially in England where Dire Straits were from, were pretty much dominated by punk rock. Uh, so uh, Songs of Swing was an unlikely hit and initially almost wasn't. Uh, it took months to catch fire. BBC Radio in their home country of England refused to play it initially, uh, mainly because it was too lyric heavy and, and wordy. Uh, not until about uh, six months to eight months after its release did it catch on in America, and this caused uh, British radio to give it a second look, thankfully. Uh, and then it was off. Uh, massive hit worldwide. Uh, you don't need me to tell you this, but uh, the, the guitar playing in this is just exquisite. Uh, Knopfler exploded on the scene as a guitar force to be reckoned with, and uh, he did it his own way, uh, for the most part with clean, finger-picked uh, virtuosity. Uh, this project of mine, playing through this Top 100 Guitar Solo list, has proven to have provided me with uh, many benefits as a guitar player, but most importantly, it has taught me a lot of new things. And this piece has, has taught me uh, a lot, most notably how to guitar solo without a pick. Uh, finger picking is not something I've done very much of, and uh, it was really tricky when I first dug into this solo. Uh, now, I've dabbled in classical guitar over the years, uh, and so I know how to use my right hand, uh, you know, in sync with my left hand, you know, this kind of classical type stuff, but transferring that ability to soloing on an electric guitar uh, is a different ballgame altogether, especially trying to nail Knopfler's unique uh, finger-picking style. One key to Knopfler's style is his use of muted or dead notes. Uh, really interesting stuff. I've, uh, I watched a few uh, tutorials and covers of Sultans of Swing on YouTube, and uh, a few of them either gloss over the mutes or, or ignore them altogether. Uh, you can't gloss over the mutes when you're playing Mark Knopfler. They're uh, an integral part of Mark Knopfler's style and integral to this solo. They need to be there uh, as much as the notes need to be there. Uh, to watch Mark Knopfler play this live, he just takes that style to another level with, with this uh, muting technique. A uh, really interesting and unique aspect to his playing. Uh, these two solos are, uh, are played in D minor, uh, using the D minor pentatonic with a few dips into the harmonic minor uh, scale. Uh, some lovely arpeggio work here and there uh, to really help flesh it out. Uh, it's just a remarkable solo, as most of you know. Uh, I hope that I did it justice. Uh, I only worked on it for about a week, but I practiced the hell out of it uh, for hours every night. Uh, now, a bit about this guitar and uh, the tone on this one. I used Bias FX2 uh, <clears throat> uh, software with this one. I used uh, a couple of uh, Twin Reverb 67 Blackface Fender Twin Reverb amps, pretty much cranked, uh, volumes cranked on both amps, uh, gains on about 7 or 7.5, and uh, bass mi uh, mids and treble on about uh, 7.5 or 8. Uh, uh, lots of compression, 
a uh, little bit of chorus, a little bit of delay, uh, uh, some reverb, of course. Uh, I may have overdone the reverb just a touch. I'm not sure. You let me, uh, you let me know down below in the comments. But uh, anyway, I think it sounds pretty close. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the final outcome of the tone. This is a big aspect of the tone, and this is a guitar that I have never used before in any of my videos. I built this about four or five months ago. I picked up this body uh, off my local marketplace pretty cheap. I love the color of it. It was just uh, somebody was selling a, a Strat body. And uh, I put in a 920D uh, custom shop uh, Fender Classic 70s or 70s Classic loaded pickguard into this thing. I also got this pretty cheap. These things are worth like $300. I got it for about 60 bucks on my local marketplace. I dropped that in it, put a Fender bridge in it, hardtailed it. Uh, this neck, I think it's from a PV Predator Stratocaster copy. Uh, I bolted that onto it. I replaced the tuners. I put some Grover tuners on this. I put a Graftech nut, Graftech string trees. Uh, gave it a full setup and it's playing absolutely beautifully. And I think it sounds really good. And uh, this is the first time I've used it in any of my videos. And uh, one of the first times I've played it since I built it. Uh, anyway, just a lovely guitar. And I uh, just want to show you a little bit about those mutes I was talking about, uh, his, his, uh, the technique that he uses. Uh, for the first solo... Those mutes right there. Be there, and that uh, is uh, some really fun stuff to do when you're finger picking. Sorry, my phone's chiming on me. And he gets into that at a couple of a couple of other points in this solo, and uh, really great stuff, and uh, really fun to, to finger pick. I, re I really enjoyed learning this solo. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I got, and uh, this was a rather long little rant. Uh, so anyway, uh, I hope you like that one. Uh, such a famous solo. Any little missteps uh, here and there in this one uh, are really going to stand out. So I tried to get this one as close as possible. And I think I did okay. I played it for my wife after I was finished uh, recording it. And she said, oh, it sounds just like it. And I said, yeah, that's kind of the point. And, uh, but uh, anyway, I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm, I think I'm happy with the tone as well. And uh, so anyway, that's all I, I have for today. And uh, we'll be back next week with another solo. And we're going to crack into the top 20 pretty soon. And uh, so you guys take care of yourselves. Hope you're happy in your little guitar corner of the world. And uh, we'll see you next time. Ciao.